All right, in this video, we are gonna start developing our actual web API. So the first thing while we start developing the application is gonna to be to start using the VS Code instead of the Visual Studio 2022 itself. And the reason why I'm actually using the VS Code is because I have a plugin called as GitHub Copilot. If you've already heard about GitHub Copilot, it's an artificial intelligence based code completion tool from GitHub. And it is quite interesting because it does a lot of magics for us while we start developing the application. And I have already installed it. I have already signed up for the preview of the GitHub Copilot. That's the reason I already have the access to GitHub Copilot. And I will show you the awesomeness of GitHub Copilot while we start developing the code. Well, as it said, we'll start developing the application itself. So you can see that this application currently is like a skeleton application. And if you go over here and if you try, let's do an LS, I guess it's coming up. Uh, let me just do a .NET run. You will see that it is building the application for us, for us. And also it is going to start the application on the local host 5000 over here. Something like this. You can see that it brings me up this particular controller like weather forecast. And if I try executing the weather forecast, it is gonna show me all the weather forecast of like five countries coming up for me automatically. And the reason why this is working is because it is actually written on this template code for us over here. So you can see that there is already a model and there is a, what is called as a controller over here, which actually has got the different countries details uh, along with the summaries, something like this. And it is just bringing up all the details for us over here. That's it. This is what is this controller. And there is a startup file and this is a program.cs file. So basically, while the application starts executing, there is going to be this program file, which is going to be most important, which act as a main entry point for our application start, which is then going to invoke this create web host builder because you can see that's what is being called. And this web host builder is going to then call the startup class file, which is nothing but this class file, which initializes the configurations put the dependency injection on the container because there are so many dependency injections available on this particular MVC. And it also sets all the HTTPS redirection, routing, authorizations and stuff. And also the swagger that we just saw on the UI just now. So it's also going to be set over here during the development environment. It sets everything in the configure method and then it starts the application for us. So this is what is basically happening on this particular project. And we'll leverage the same project to start building up our own controllers and our own models. And we'll see how we can retrieve the data from an NED frameworks and stuff. So I'm just gonna delete this weather forecast because I'm not gonna be using that. And once I delete that, you will see that there is gonna be some other errors coming up, which is probably okay. I'm probably gonna delete this weather forecast as well. So let's start adding our uh, data folder. So th this is the data folder which I was talking about which actually has got our what is called as the product model or probably you can call us entity as well because we will be using the entity framework for doing that. So I'm going to create a class and I'm going to call this as a product class and this particular product class is going to hold our details of the product like what this product is going to look like so i'm just going to say int of id so that's the product id which i'm going to be creating and then i'm going to have a product name and you can see that it automatically brings this intelligence for me because this is coming from the vs code github copilot plugin extension that i was talking about that helps me relieve so many uh, typings that i really wanted to do you can see that all these details I actually require and that's all coming for me automatically, which is cool. And then I also need what is called as a uh, product type probably. So which is not coming for me, which is okay. So I'm gonna say a product type and this is gonna be basically an enum type, which I'm gonna be creating. So let me go ahead and create that enum type so you see that it automatically brings that enum as well but i'm going to create something like a cpu uh, and i wanted to create like a monitor peripherals and external something like these details and these are the product enum type that i wanted to create that's it so this is my first data which is going to hold 
So this is how my data structure is going to look like for that particular product. And once I have this, I then need to create the product DB context and which I need to do using another class file. So I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call this as product DB context. And this particular product DB context is going to be inheriting from what is called as an DB context. And this DB context is going to be coming from the entity framework. So I need to have what is called as an entity framework right now, which I don't really have. So probably you can see that it's automatically bringing all the code for me. So I'm not going to do all those things. Rather, let's first install the entity framework. So I'm going to go uh, add a NuGet package. I'm going to call this entity framework, which is this one. I'm going to install that. And it says the version has 5.6.7.0, uh, but I'm going to go with the 6.44, the stable version. Uh, let me restore that. And I also am going to use the uh, SQLite database of Entity Framework. So core.sqlite, SQLite, like that. Just install that as well, table version. Let's store that. Once I have all these things, if I go to my project product API, you will see that I have my SQL Server. Uh, and the SQLite and the Entity Framework, which is cool. And now let me go back to my DB context. Now this time I'm very confident that I can add this DB context. Uh, these are automatically being added for me. And you can see that once I do that, it automatically adds some other code for me, which is also important. Let me add the dependencies like using system.data.entity. I require that. So that's added. And then there is this uh, DB context. So I'm going to hit control dot to use this as well. There is this uh, error happening at the moment. Let me check. It says that the DB context is an ambiguous reference between the system dot data dot entity dot DB context and the entity framework core dot DB context. I guess this reason is this is the problem. Let me just type deleting this one over here. And the issues are gone, which is good. So this is the setup for the DB context, I guess. And once this is done, we can then start writing our code to write some of the seeding data because we need to insert the data as like an initial data while we start creating or accessing the API. So I'm going to call what is called as a seed data. This is the class which I'm going to be creating. And this particular seed data class is going to be a probably a static class. So I'm going to write something like an extension uh, over here. So it's going to be like an extension class and I'm going to write in extension method something like public static void seed uh, and this seed data is going to be calling the product db context I'm probably going to make this as product db context so this is the one and over here I'm just going to write something like an if condition so if and you can see that it automatically writes all the code for me over here. Like if the contest is not equal to the products of any, so this is going to be using the system.link, then probably just add the new product for me. So it's adding something which I really require, but not exactly the same code that I really require. So probably I'm just going to copy paste some of the code that I have already uh, written, which is going to be not these code, these codes. So you can see that it has some details like the name, description, price, and product type. And we are not going to add the component in this particular uh, series because I don't want to overcomplicate the code. So I'm going to get rid of the components. Uh, so let me get rid of the components again. And I'm also going to get rid of the components from here. So that's our code. And once we have all the details of the product, I can then start doing something like a adding the product in the product DB context, which is going to be the context dot products dot add range of the products. And then I also need to do a save changes. So everything is automatically coming for me once again, which is great. Cool. 
and I'm going to add the system.collections.generic and that's my seed method. So this is the seed method which is going to be called during our startup class file in the configure method. I'm then going to probably format my document uh, which is going to look a bit more cleaner which is cool. That's it. That's about our C data method. In our next video, we will start writing a database and also call this C data method so that we have our data layer ready, which is going to be our model side of things ready. And our next following that we'll start creating the controller layer or probably the API layer, which is going to be accessing the data that we have created.